Channel 5. Troy Williamson defends his British Super Welterweight Championship against the pretty boy Josh Kelly. Who wins? Find out Friday, December the 2nd, 9pm, live and free on Channel 5. I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife for saying completely different ball game. I'll walk away from here and this has been like a therapy session. <laughs> this is Colin McGregor for AFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Delighted to be joined by Eddie Hearn. Eddie, talk to me about that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we were just... Laughing off air because you said something to me and all I heard was, how does it we? And I was like, what? Yeah, um, unbelievable night. I mean, top to bottom, the card, fantastic. Atmosphere, fantastic. Main event, fantastic. Um, just a, an honour, really, to sit there and watch those two. I mean, I actually, I was quite surprised that when they, they ran the poll after the fight, more people had Chocolatito winning. I didn't. I had Estrada winning the fight. Close, but 6-4, something like uh, Sorry. Uh, I did 115-113. Um, and, you know, I was interested to see how many people had Chocolatito winning. But great fight, great start from Estrada, and Chocolatito came back. In fact, I, like, the first two rounds were quite average. And I was sitting there going, oh, fucking hell. God. I was thinking to myself before this fight started, well, this is a, an absolute sewn-on blockbuster. And then it evolved into a fantastic fight. So, yeah, fair play to Estrada. I thought he boxed fantastically well. What's next for Estrada? Do you think the unification fight takes precedent, or do you think maybe that potential? I mean, of... the fourth is there. It's still a big fight. It sells massive tickets. It does big numbers. Um, he does want to unify. I mean, the Ioka against Franco fight coming up in Japan in December is, is it of interest to him. But we'll have to see. Julio Cesar Martinez can move up and fight Estrada in a big old Mexican fight as well. So. Um, you know, those guys, those pound for pound guys, those Hall of Fame guys like Estrada and Chocolatito kind of at this stage can pick and choose. And I've no idea what, what both of them are going to do next in all honesty. I see the dollar signs on your eyes going there when you're talking about Estrada Chocolatito 4. But do you think that there's a potential for Chocolatito to sail away into the sunset now? He is, he is getting yeah, a bit older. I, mean, and... I, I felt that Chocolatito's last few performances have been fantastic. And for the first four or five rounds tonight, I was thinking, you know, is he on the way out and then he fights back into the fight and looks sensational they're telling me that he's doing 15 rounds of sparring four or five minute rounds with 30 seconds rest he looked like a guy that might have been overtrained in there early on in that fight i mean either that but it's difficult because he is getting old he's not that old i mean is he 34 30, 35 i mean can you believe that i'm eight years older than chocolatito i mean that you know i look at him and i feel like he's eight years older than me but um Look, he's training so hard. He's still fighting and competing at the elite level, so I'm not sure. I think it's a, a decision he'll take with his family. We well, haven't got much time, so I'll go quickly through the rest of the card. Diego Pacheco, what a performance. Yeah. What's next for him? He did yeah. refer to going back to the UK. Yeah, this kid is uh, very special. I mean, I signed him at 17. I've been building him really nicely. He's now getting really you know, well-recognised at all these major shows. He's probably a year away from headlining himself. He's 21. He's 16-0. and 0. He's a future world champion. I think a multi-weight world champion. And uh, it was a great performance from him. Devastating. I thought the Rosales-Velasquez um, fight was fantastic. I actually thought it was a draw. But then I tweeted it and everyone said, shut up, Eddie, you talk shit. So um, Rosales was a deserved winner by the sounds of things. Julio Cesar Martinez, I mean... I understand Carmona busted his hand actually in about the sixth round and was boxing really well and like if he would have boxed like he did in the early rounds and I think the last round I think it would have been a very very interesting fight so um, you know we'll see what happens with Julio Cesar Martinez the Sonny Edwards fights there you've got Bam Rodriguez fighting for the WBO world title maybe Julio Cesar moves up and fights Estrada it's a massive fight um, I thought Mark Castro boxed really well Amo Williams with a, with a solid win looks like Felix Cash next for him um, Herrera in a great fight as well and Beatrice Ferreira is an absolute savage watch out for this girl in fact you know, I said to Alicia Baumgartner tonight because we were talking about the rematch and Baumgartner Meyer I think, I think Michaela Meyer should fight Beatrice Ferreira and I think if she does that next yeah and if she does that and if she beats Beatrice Ferreira we'll give her the Alicia Baumgartner rematch because then she's earned it you know and I think uh, Ferreira is a beast like, she's a beast. Fury Chisora tonight. Did you, did you get watching it? And what did you make of it? I watched a bit of it. It was in, on in the office. Um, you know, it was hard to watch. Uh, look, Dell's a diamond, you know. He's, he'll never stop trying. Um, you know, I don't... 
like sort of bit pointing out what's been said in the past because it just seems like me that gets all the stick anyway. But Frank Warren said like two years ago, Derek Chisora should retire. It's a disgrace they're letting him fight. And then someone mentioned the Fury Chisora fight, and he said, "Oh, it's a joke." You could. And then two years later, promotes the fight. And the problem is with boxing is everyone's during that fight. Everyone's watching, saying, "You've got to stop this fight," but no one's actually stopping it. Do you know what I mean? So do you think the corner should have stopped it earlier? It's very difficult because Don Charles knows Derek Chisora better than anyone. Derek Chisora will never quit. Never. And I'm sure Don Charles knows that. So the moment you, you need the ref, and I think Victor Lofton did a good job, and I think maybe it should have been done three or four rounds earlier. And listen, Tyson Fury also held him up, really, like a little bit. But Derek's brave as they come, you know, and he's just not going to stop. But I think that... You know, in a situation like that, Derek could have given Tyson Fury the best shot he had in the tank and it wouldn't have hurt him at that point. So, and he's losing every round. So you, if you can't win the fight from there in that situation, then... But it's... I feel like we all watch it and people in the crowd and at ringside watch it, but it, then it goes on. And, you know, for me, I would have liked seeing it stopped earlier. But Would you like to see... Derek Chisora retire now and he's, he's got a big pay there Dan. I think so I mean look it's difficult because when you're beating Pulev and though like Pulev's a top 15 guy Chisora beat him so he doesn't want to retire but then he gets a big payday against Fury and obviously Fury's a level above him he can come back and fight a Zhang or he can fight a Hergovic or he can fight a you know I don't know but Fabio Wardley but He's also made a huge amount of money the last couple of years, and he's, you know, he's a, we all love him. And, and you know, I, I think now would be a, a great time to probably hang him up. Fury, it looks as if it's going to happen. What does that mean for Philip Hergovic? Nothing. I mean, we have to see what happens with the belts. Um, there's still a bit of fighting to go, and, and it's not a case of us trying to stop the undisputed. We work for Philip Hergovic. I've got a job to do. So, but at the same time, we understand how important the undisputed fight is. It's a great fight. Um, and I think it will get made Saudi in February or March. Dubois said afterwards, I think Shane McGuigan actually said it, they want Dillian White next. Could you see that fight? Maybe, yeah. I mean, I didn't really see what happened. I mean, I had all these things going mad. Someone's let Dubois carry on when he was out or they cut the round short or the free knockdown rule was in play, but it wasn't. And I don't know what happened, if it was his leg, if he was concussed or whatever. Then Lorena just looked like he stopped trying. It was so, like, I didn't watch the first round. I picked it up from the second round, and all I saw was Dubois down three times. He's out of it. And then I turned on, and Lorena didn't try an inch. And I was thinking, what's going on here? I don't understand. And then he got hit by one shot, and then they, they stopped it. It was all very, very strange. But um, Dubois, why? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I think, that, look, Dubois is exciting because he can really punch, and I don't think his punch resistance great. So he's really exciting. He's dangerous, and... You know, we're working on some big fights for Dillian White and, and, you know, I know that there was talks of that fight before, it didn't get made, but, you know, it's a good fight. Williamson, Kelly, did you get watching that last night and what did you make of it? Again, we had it on in the office and uh, I thought it was a good performance from Josh Kelly. I think that Josh Kelly is, you see, there's a, there's a level between Troy Williamson and David Avenesia, right? And the, the, the biggest problem Josh has faced over the years is in here. He's got all the, all the ability in the world, but beating Troy Williamson is a great step back, but he's still short of the level where he fell short, you know? So we'll have to see. But I was really pleased for him and Adam because he's been through a tough time. And he's a great kid as well, and I think he's got loads of talent, and I hope he goes on. How about if... Conor Ben does come back the ban isn't that long would you like to make that fight Conor Ben Josh Kelly it's a, it's yeah, a clash of stats it's a good fight I mean I'm not sure whether you'll see Josh back at 147 because um, he looked to, to have a lot more energy at 154 and that's another you know, he used to start fast and then struggle from there but yeah we could look at Conor Ben against Josh Kelly I mean we've got some big fights lined up for Conor Ben but ultimately we have to wait on the decision from the WBC talk to me a bit about next week Leeds coming up yeah. massive card this is a, such a tough fight for Josh Warrington against Lopez. Huge fight for Ebony Bridges, Felix Cash, James Metcalf. And listen, if Senegal, I won't say too much, but if we beat Senegal, huh? 
He's already told me. Oh, is he? What, on camera? Yeah. Fucking big mouth, Frank Smith, isn't he? No, I'm coming from you. Jesus Christ. Turns up, it's raining today. He looks like he's going on safari. Listen, all we're saying is, if England beats Senegal, it's on Sunday, even though he's already said it, get ready for a night in Leeds next Saturday. You will never forget. Has he given you all the details? All the details, every last one. sake. <laughs> Any comments on that? No, but obviously I was going to give it the big one with a full announcement about this boxing football watch party and fights and World Cup and blah, blah, blah. I'm going to wear an England shirt, a retro one. Are you joking me? No. I'm serious. It's coming home, son. We're that going to watch the England sure. game in the arena and then we're going to watch Ebony Bridges knock out Shannon O'Connell and Josh Warrington knock out Lopez. It's going to be wild. You heard it here first on AFL. Lastly... Wood, what's next? Twenty eighth of of January. Oh, right. yeah, Lee possibly. Wood. It's not. That's not the confirmed date, but we may well be making Lee Wood against Maurizio Lara. And and you know. What happens with Kiko then? Um, I mean, Kiko wasn't in line for that fight. You know, it was just uh, something we were thinking about. I think if Lee doesn't fight Lara, it'll be Lara Kiko Martinez. And who would Lee fight then? Don't know. Okay. Thanks right. very much. We'll see what happens with Josh Warrington next week because if Josh Warrington wins. We'll be looking to make Lee Wood against Josh Warrington. Thanks very much, Ed. Appreciate it. Thank you, Carl. On Channel 5, Troy Williamson defends his British Super Welterweight Championship against the pretty boy Josh Kelly. Who wins? Find out Friday, December the 2nd, 9pm, live and free on Channel 5. I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, please, different ball game. I'll walk away from here and this has been like a therapy session.